uh, a lot of um, just a lot of things encroaching on our freedoms everywhere you look, and a lot of it comes from these three-letter agencies. You know the 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 monstrosity of the EPA and all of these other government agencies, the IRS pounding on people's doors. Freedom is a struggle every day, and it seems that the government's just getting so large, just monolith, just crushing individual rights whenever it can. Too often, Pete, or am I just a little bit over the top? No, I actually uh, just came back uh, from a speech that I gave to the Leadership Conference in the Rockies. It's a great organization. Uh, and that was pretty much the theme of my speech in terms of what's happening to uh, America. And it was a, it, you know, we are, you're absolutely right, We're, and not enough people are talking about this. We are in a struggle for freedom, uh, and it's not only a struggle against rules and regulations in government, Steve, it's also a struggle against absolute corruption, in some of our government agencies, pushing a not only a bureaucratic agenda, uh, but pu- pushing a political agenda, which is a, well, Pete, a great I want you to weigh in on this. Freedom. I want you to weigh in on this because I just talked about this before the break. Uh, Joe Biden now announcing our commitments to Ukraine have now increased to about two hundred billion dollars. Two hundred billion dollars we're giving you, but now we're paying for. Opening schools, opening hospitals, paying pensions, paying unemployment. I'm like, what? We're paying pensions for Ukrainians. We're op- America's lost 200 hospitals in the last few years because they went out of business, because of bad governance, bad government policies in large part. And, and we're opening hospitals in Ukraine. We're paying the pension of retirees in Ukraine while we can't allow for American veterans to get out of the homeless struggle that they're in every single day. I mean, to me, it's just flat-out outrageous on every front. How is this even possible? How is it possible? We have no plan. We have no definition of what an in-state looks like. We have no definition of what winning in Ukraine looks like. Uh, You know, we got in there because we had a president who displayed weakness, uh, and it just goes on and on. And, you know, you're absolutely right. We have tons of needs here in America. But again, you and I would argue strongly that most of the needs that we have in America are not going to be solved by having bigger government and government spending more. It's by allowing American citizens to make their decisions what they want to invest in and us spending our money. And and you're absolutely right. Now, you know, our taxpayers, our taxpayer dollars are going to Ukraine. To pay for (laughs) their unemployment, to pay for their pensions, to open hospitals. For a country we don't even have an arrangement with to do any of these things. We don't have a treaty with Ukraine to do any of these things. It's outrageous. When the United States southern border remains wide open and we spend $200 billion in Ukraine, really? I mean, this you've got American veterans that are homeless every night. And this is how we're spending our money, really? 